Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Bunny Podcast, your source for all things money. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today is a very special reunion 2020 episode. What is that? That's when I bring on a guest that I had on in the past, and I liked him so much I had to bring him right on back. Uh, so today's guest is Adam Weingartner. He's a partner over at Bluestone Wealth Partners. Adam, welcome back to the show. Hey, Adam. Thanks so much for having me back. Great to be on. So I'm excited to get into uh, today's topic. So talking about the market, is a recession coming, um, your outlook, um, let's, we're going to get into that. But before we do, I don't want to assume that all the new listeners um, heard your first episode. So let's just start off with getting into what you're doing over at Bluestone Wealth Partners. Tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Sure, Adam. So, so Bluestone is a comprehensive wealth management firm we work with. Corporate executives, business owners, retirees, and a lot of younger folks, too, we're really strong when it comes to asset management, retirement planning, insurance, estate planning, wealth transfer strategies, and our real difference makers are uh, our service level and, and certainly the clarity we provide to people. We provide a really high level of service. Our team is really strong at all levels, and we take a lot of pride in the fact that our clients understand what the heck it is that we do. So that's, mm. that's who we are. What um, Just for the people listening, I, we're going to get into the market shortly, but just for the people listening and so they know if they're the right kind of fit to follow up, um, what are the type of clients you like working with? Sure. So my team in particular specifically works with a lot of retail corporate executives. So in Columbus, Ohio, where we're located, we work with a lot of folks who are, um, you know, VPs or directors, and even we've got a pretty large growing number of officers that we work with in some of the larger um, uh, companies within Columbus here. And, you know, I personally um, take a lot of um, ownership in working with some of the younger folks, so people who are accumulating assets and they start to say, okay, I'm maxing out this, I'm doing that, what else should I be doing? So that's, that's, that's our main uh, client sources there. Awesome. Um, so let's get into it. Let's get right into the market. I mean, it's on everybody's mind. Is a recession coming? Yeah, of course. That's the, probably the biggest thing we're talking about today. And I think the reason is because, gosh, this is the longest expansion that our country's economy has ever seen. And we're certainly, wow. uh, we certainly think we're late cycle. Just for some context, the business cycle typically lasts anywhere from 9 to 11 years. Um, the late cycle period typically lasts about 18 months. Of course, that's, there's always a range to that. Everyone is different. But we feel like we're probably in the seventh or eighth inning here. Keep in mind, just like baseball, extra innings is always possible. But overall, in the near term, we feel that recession risk is low. Some of the positive signals that we still see, um, you know, when you get towards the end of that business cycle, Adam, you start to see things like declining profit margins. Uh, that leads to a decreased level of hiring, which then leads to layoffs. Not, not a lot of that stuff is happening yet. So profit margins are still really high. Uh, hiring has flattened a little bit, but it's certainly not decreasing. Layoffs, not even close. So in terms of, um, you know, unemployment claims, they haven't moved a whole lot. But in terms of the jobs reports that we've seen recently, mm -hmm. they're really, really strong. Uh, the most recent report we saw in February, uh, you know, unemployment is still very low. And the, even the better news, I think, was the labor participation rate ticked up a bit. So uh, as that market continues to climb, that's only good news. But jobs are still being created at a very healthy clip, which is good for everything. Uh, along the same lines, we've got a very accommodative Fed. So the Fed is the body that sort of controls monetary policy when they lower interest rates. That's a positive uh, factor for the market. And in the past, what we've seen with the business cycle is when the economy heats up, the Fed will rise or they'll raise interest rates a bit, and it might be a little bit too soon, which can pull the economy into a recession. I don't know if the Fed is learning from previous mistakes or 
or what, but what they've shown mm -hmm. us here in the last couple of years is that they're willing to do whatever they need to to keep this thing going. Actually lowered rates last year. Uh, the balance sheet is expanding once again, and we just got a very business-friendly environment with really low interest rate. Uh, one thing that they're always going to look at is inflation, and we're looking at that too. Still not much of an issue. The last number I saw, uh, the headline CPI number was about 2.3%, which is a very manageable level. Uh, it did trend upward a little bit, but still not anything we're concerned with in terms of wage inflation, so people are making more money, about 3% growth. Uh, again, that's not enough to really drive inflation, and mm -hmm. uh, not a big boom number either, but we're happy that wages are growing. Looking at the consumer, consumer spending, really strong. Consumer confidence is really high. If you look at uh, individual, you know, family personal balance sheets and net worths, those numbers all look stellar. So things are pretty healthy in terms of uh, credit conditions, it's not overly restrictive. Uh, however, we've still got, there's always going to be the uncertainty factors as well. So it was, it was staggering to see when the coronavirus hit, <coughs> how fast the market pulled back, how fast that market slid. And no doubt, I'll get more into that. But would you believe in a year like 2019, when the market was up over 30%, we still saw a net outflow of equities across the market. I'm not talking about mm. our firm. I'm saying across equity-oriented yeah. ETFs and mutual funds, there was a net outflow. People running to the sidelines, running to uh, bonds or treasuries to, to find safety. If they say, uh, you know, they say bull markets climb a wall of worry, well, that's true. That's exactly what we have here today. But, mm -hmm. but some of the things folks are worried about, I mentioned the coronavirus. So I don't want to gloss over, you know, make light of the. Uh, so, go ahead. Yeah, the, so the market reaction to things like this. So, coronavirus, um, you know, um, obviously we got a lot going on in politics right now. Um, it seems like, and so this late inning, I've been hearing this late inning thing for like years now with this expansion, and it's kind of it's kind of interesting because it's like if we were talking about late innings, we're like in I don't know if we counted if we counted the amount of years of late innings, we're in many many um, uh, rounds of overtime, if you will, so our extra innings. Um, so that being said, what would be some in your mind? What would be some of the things that um, would worry you if you were to see some change in numbers? That's a great point, Adam. So, so let me explain. So, even though time-wise we might be in the 12th or 13th inning, you know, baseball is not a timed game. So, no. if you look at the magnitude of this expansion, uh, mm -hmm. we think we're okay in those later. You know, since it's gone on so long, because it still hasn't grown all that much. So, it's been the longest expansion and also the slowest expansion, and that slow growth rate is, is continuing to, to trudge on. So, uh, But to answer your question, in the short term, I'll mention the coronavirus because that's sort of mm -hmm. top of mind. And as I started to say, I don't want to make light of the, uh, I think it's over 1,000 people now that have died. Of from course, that. of course. In terms of economic impact, the biggest impact is we've taken China and we've sealed them off from the rest of the world. Uh, it's the second largest economy by far and, yeah, it's within the range of possibilities that we don't find a cure for this thing. We continue to quarantine people. Goods, services, uh, you know, products are not being shipped in and out of that economy. <clears throat> That's a big problem. But big problem. if you look at coronavirus, it's got it. You know, it's got a, a high likelihood that we do come to a resolution. I don't know what it's going to be. If you're constantly making snap reactions to things like that, you're just you're going to be wrong most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but but in terms of other things, uh, in terms of trade, so one thing that wasn't so good in 2019 was capital spending, capex, and mm -hmm. in an environment where we've got low tax rates, we've got a strong economy. We would like to see companies spending a bit more. Uh, of course, the good news is we have a phase one deal with China with this trade war. And, you know, that tells us maybe we're not out of the woods yet, but it also tells us these countries are willing and motivated to work together, and hopefully there won't be any further escalation. Uh, in terms
terms of uh, earnings. So let's, mm-hmm. let's refocus on the stock market. So the economy and the stock market, they're very interrelated, obviously, but they're two different things. The deeper into a bull market we get, the more important these earnings reports are that come out every quarter. And sure, stock prices are higher than they've ever been, but guess what? So are these companies' earnings. And if they continue to make more money, then their stock prices can continue to grow. Uh, you know, as you probably know, a, a stock or an index should be worth a multiple of its, of its earnings. It's called the P.E. ratio, price to earnings. And historically, that number is about 16 times. So if a company is worth 16 times what it's making, that's about a, it's a normal healthy level. Today, the S&P 500 is trading at closer to 19 times earnings, which is north of, you know, the 80th percentile historically. So, you know, the fact that companies continue to outperform, that might be baked into the cake to an extent. We need that outperform. Right. And there's big estimates coming if you look down the line of the third and fourth quarter. So um, I guess I'd be worried a little bit about that. But at the same time, don't be too blinded by that because, mm-hmm. uh, again, we've got the backdrop of low interest rates, a strong jobs economy, and, you know, low tax yeah. rates. Yeah, as much as I as much as I want to be a skeptic, it just seems sustainable, and that's 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 the thing about it. I I want to be a skeptic. I want to, but I'm like some of the like it's just kind of like these new norms are being hit, or are they new norms? Which we, obviously you know time will tell, right? Um, so Adam, Absolutely. if somebody uh, so if somebody's listening to this, Adam, and they want more information on uh, Bluestone Wealth Partners or to connect, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Sure. So. Uh, easiest way, you know, you could, uh, well, check out our website. You can find all my contact information. You can email me at aweingartner at bluestonewp.com. Certainly, you can find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. Um, pick up the phone and call me, 614-854-1984. Fantastic. Well, hey, Adam, it's been awesome having you back for this uh, Reunion 2020 episode and to get your market update and and your thoughts on what's going on um, overall. And uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes Store. If you're watching this uh, on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Money, um, be sure to subscribe to the channel, but also leave us some comments. Let us know your thoughts on on the market and what's going on. And uh, Adam, thanks again for coming on the show.